Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, the infinitely good, the merciful, are two names derived from mercy. Mercy requires an object of mercy, and no one is an object of mercy unless he be in need. His mercy covers everything, everyone, whether they are a mu'min believer, whether they are a kafir, one who disbelieves, whether it's a jinn, whether it's a believing jinn, a non-believing jinn, whether it's uh, uh, birds in the sky, whether it's fish in the sea, whether it's the um, earth and the worms inside the earth, Allah's rahmah and His mercy covers everything. Ar-Rahman and his name Ar-Rahim and his name Arhamur Rahimin and Khairul Rahimin and the Rahma. And by deriving five different names from the same root, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is emphasizing the concept of Rahma. And there is no question that the primary attribute of the entire Quran when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the attribute of Rahmah. There is no other noun or verb from which five names have been derived. And if you look at the quantity of times that Allah ascribes mercy to Himself in the Quran, there is no other attribute that comes close. Over 500 different adjectives and verbs and nouns all of which derive around Rahmah are ascribed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim are found in the Quran in a number of different places. In the case of the name Ar-Rahman, it is found 57 times in the Quran. In kullu man fis samawati wal ard illa ata ata rahmani abda. All in the heavens and the earth come to God, the beneficent, as a servant. And really these are two of the greatest names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the most oft repeated names in the Quran. And they are among the names that are repeated many, many, many times in the Quran. From this is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa the most merciful Ar-Rahman has risen over the throne. كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ Your Lord has decreed for Himself that He shall be merciful. كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ And this ayah, it illustrates for us a very interesting point. Even Allah has laws. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obeys laws. But no one has the right to legislate upon Allah, except Allah. Allah has the right to legislate on Himself. And no other entity has the right to legislate upon Allah. And if Allah had wanted to, He could have legislated anything upon Himself. Even Allah has rules that He abides by. But what are these rules? Allah Azza wa Jal has told us a few of them. Of them, and the most important one, Inna rahmati taghlibu ghadabi. Our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that your Lord decreed. This hadith is in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, and it uh, affirms what the Quran is saying. Your Lord decreed upon Himself before creating the heavens and earth by fifty thousand years, and it's fifty thousand means in, in beyond our comprehension. Before Allah created anything. He decreed upon himself a rule that he wrote in a book that is with him. Literally the hadith says, Kitaban in the nafsi. He has a book that is with Allah. So even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a code book, has a law. Every entity has laws, even Allah. But the difference is Allah legislates upon himself. And Allah has rules that he has promised his servants he will always abide by. And what is the number one rule that we learn in the Quran and in the Sunnah? Inna rahmati taghlibu ghadabi. My rahmah shall always overcome my anger. My mercy shall always triumph shall always win over my anger. Perfect mercy is pouring out benefication to those in need and directing it to them for their care and inclusive mercy is when it embraces deserving and undeserving alike. The mercy of God, great and glorious, is both perfect and inclusive. Tamama wa'amama.
perfect in as much as it wants to fulfill the needs of those in need and does not meet them, and inclusive in as much as it embraces both deserving and underdeserving, encompassing this world and the next, and includes bare necessities and needs and special gifts over and above them. So he is utterly and truly merciful. Both names come from the, the Arabic root Rahma, which means mercy. And both of them are what are called intensive forms of the present participle. The original form Rahim becomes Rahman and Rahim. Now, both of them f fundamentally, we're saying, means merciful, but there are some subtle differences between the two. Rahman is looked at as being a more intensive form than Rahim because the intensive forms, uh, depending on the number of letters that, that constitute them, the more letters, the more intensive they're considered to be. And Rahman has more letters than a Rahim. But in terms of the understanding with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the general explanation which is commonly given and most people are familiar with it is that Rahman is one who possesses complete mercy for the creatures of this world and for the believers in the next, covering both worlds, this world and the next. Whereas Rahim is more specific for the believers on the Day of Judgment. A greatness to his mercy that shows there is no end to this mercy. And Ar-Rahim, Allah's name Ar-Rahim, is when Allah has mercy specifically to the believers. So this is only to those who have turned to Him. This is only to those who believe in Him. These are only people who are close to Him. These are only people whom Allah has chosen. And they, if it's in this dunya, if it's in this world, then His Rahmah, His mercy will be with them specifically. Uh, uh, as, as well as those who don't believe in him, that's fine, that's from Rahman. But Rahim is only for the Akhirah. So when in the next world, Allah Azza wa Jal, on the day of judgment, he will have mercy on the believers, it will be him as being Rahim. The name Ar-Rahman, the name Ar-Rahman is a unique name. There is no other name like it in the Quran other than the name Allah itself. And the name Allah, and the name Ar-Rahman have a unique status that no other name shares. And that is that both of these names are considered to be the primary name of Allah. Typically the name Allah and the name Ar-Rahman, they occur by themselves. They don't have a second name attached to them. Rarely they do, but typically it's by themselves. And the name Ar-Rahman is linked directly with the name Allah. قُلْ اِدْعُوا اللَّهَ أَوْ اِدْعُوا الرَّحْمَانِ Allah says, Call upon Allah or call upon Ar-Rahman. Whichever of these two that you choose. Ayyamma tad'u. Whichever of these two that you choose. Falahu al-asma'ul husna. All of the other names belong to him. So Allah and Ar-Rahman, Allah says, all the other names go back to them. And there's no other name that has been raised to that status other than these two. Allah and Ar-Rahman. In the case of Ar-Rahman, this is a description of Allah's essence, of Him in character Himself. Ar-Rahman is the most merciful, and that Ar-Rahim is the bestower of mercy. Meaning that Ar-Rahman refers to the mercy that Allah has, and Ar-Rahim refers to the fact that He gives out that mercy. Now he has given out one hundredth of that mercy in this dunya. And ninety-nine out of a hundred, he has kept to give to the believers in the Akhirah. But both the dunya and the Akhirah, he is giving this mercy to people and withholding it from people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions his name Ar-Rahman in 57 occasions of the Quran. 57 occasions. Around 50 of them are standalone. They have no other name. And as I said, there's no other name that is standalone other than the name Allah. So for example, Ar-Rahman, Allama al-Quran, Khalaq al-Insan. This is a standalone name, Ar-Rahman. 
And Allah begins ayat with Allah and He begins ayat with Ar-Rahman. And there's no other name that a, that a chapter or a surah begins with. And typically in verses of majesty, in verses of glory, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions the name Ar-Rahman. For example, when Allah mentions His most magnificent creation, the biggest creation of Allah, the most magnificent creation, and that is, by the way, the throne of Allah. The largest creation of Allah is Allah's throne, Allah's arsh. Whenever Allah mentions His arsh, He always mentions the name Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahmanu ala al-arsh istawa. Ar-Rahmanu ala al-arsh istawa. Seven different times in the Quran this phrase occurs. Seven exact same phrase. Never does Allah say Allah ala al-arsh istawa. He always says Ar-Rahmanu ala al-arsh istawa. And Ibn Qayyim mentions the wisdom behind this. He says when the arsh or the throne of Allah is the largest creation. And we know this from many ahadith, by the way, uh, that the Prophet mentioned that uh, it is the heaviest of the creation and it is the largest of the creation. So when the arsh is the largest of the creation, Ibn Qayyim says, Allah wanted to mention that attribute that even envelopes the largest creation and that is the attribute of rahmah. That Allah's rahmah envelopes even the largest creation. Ar-Rahmanu ala al-arsh istawa. And there is no name of Allah that occurs upon the same structure. Now this goes a little bit advanced, I don't want to confuse you with morphology or sarf, but the Arabic language, one of the beauties of the Arabic language is you can take a three-letter verb and you can transform it into many different, uh, if you like, uh, nouns and even adjectives and adverbs, depending on what you add, what you subtract, where you put an alif, where you put... So for example, sami'a, to hear, sami' and sami' They both mean the same, but there's a difference in the meaning. Samir, the one who hears everything. Samir, the one who can hear right now. Allah is not Samir, Allah is Samir. This is morphology, the differences. What I'm trying to say, Ar-Rahman, it has an Alif Noon at the end. Rahima is the verb. Ar-Rahman has the Alif Noon. There is no other name of Allah that has this structure of the Alif Noon at the end, other than this name Ar-Rahman. Imam Qurtubi then moves on to say, that this name of Allah Azza wa Jal, Ar-Rahman, can only be used for Allah Azza wa Jal. It cannot be used for any other human being. And this is one of the debates that the scholars have, of which, which of the names are very specific for Allah. Because if you say that a name is specific for Allah, you cannot name a person with it. So for example, whereas you can, you can call someone Malik, Malik. You can name someone, his name is Malik. What does Malik mean? Malik means that he's the owner of something. But you cannot name someone Ar-Rahman. Because that is only Allah Azza wa Jal. Why? Because Allah's mercy, the fact that He can have mercy on anything from the east and the west, from this dunya to the next dunya, from any of His creations, from the heavens right down to the earth, that no one can, no one can be the same as Him in that. So that is very clear. But Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal, He, if you want to name someone by that name Ar-Rahman, you must put Abd before it. So you say Abdul Rahman. You say uh, the same as Allah. You can't, you can't name anyone Allah. But you can say Abdullah. You can say his name is a servant of Allah. You can say his name is a servant of the Rahman. That is fine. But you can't name anyone Ar-Rahman. So Ar-Rahman, the one who has the strongest and the eternal Rahmah. No other name of Allah has the Alif Noon. And that is why Ar-Rahman is so powerful. That Allah is always characterized by Rahmah. And everything He does is characterized by Rahmah. And that is why Allah Azza wa Jal mentions magnificent things when He mentions Ar-Rahman. So for example, Ar-Rahman u'allama al-Qur'ana khalaq al-insan. Because Allah is Ar-Rahman, He created all of mankind. And that is why the term Ar-Rahman, many of our scholars say that the difference between Rahman and Rahim, Rahman is for the entire creation and Rahim is for the believers. This is the primary difference. We'll come to other differences as well. But the primary difference that our scholars mention is that Ar-Rahman is for the entire creation. Ar-Rahman Quran Quran al-Insan. The entire creation he created. As for Ar-Rahim, 
then generally speaking, Ar-Rahim applies for those who have believed in Him. وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَحِيمًا Allah is Rahim for the believers. His mercy is vast. It encompasses everything. And He states that Himself in Surah Al-A'raf, verse 156, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ My mercy encompasses everything. So, whatever exists in this world exists within the mercy of Allah. Whether we're talking about the righteous and the unrighteous people and the jinn, whether we're talking about believers or disbelievers, where in the heavens or in the earth, all creatures, all beings that have an understanding and can choose the sentient beings, all of them function within the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, we did say, as we said before, that there is a special element of Allah's mercy which is reserved for the believers on the Day of Judgment. So Imam Ibn al-Qayyim, he defines the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he sheds difference or light on the difference between our mercy and His. He says, الرَّحْمَةُ صِفَةٌ تَقْتَضِي إِيصَالِ الْمَنَافِعِ وَالْمَصَالِحِ إِلَى الْعَبْدِ وَإِنْ كَرِيهَتْهَا نَفْسُهُ وَشَقَّتْ عَلَيْهَا The Rahma of Allah is a characteristic that entails that Allah provides His servants with bounties, benefits, even if such a person despises them and finds them burdensome. That's the Rahma of Allah. Think about it. Look, a parent may force his child to revise for an exam. You may impose a temporary limitation on social outings and other matters he may enjoy. Now, obviously, any child will, will hate this, but the parent is different to the short-term aspirations of the child. The parent realizes this is an act of care and mercy, and it is. So similarly, when you and I are in the thick of a horrible situation, so dark that it just leaves us lost for words, lost for answers, and we're saying things like, what mercy was there in the loss of my son to a car accident? What mercy was there in the cancer that is now uh, eating me alive? What mercy was there in the unfaithful behavior of my spouse that has just rendered me physically, emotionally, spiritually paralyzed, unable to move on? Where is there a rahmah and mercy of that? At that instant, the definition of Ar-Rahman's mercy is to be recalled. Again, the Rahmah of Allah is a characteristic which entails that Allah provides His servants with bounties and benefits even if such a person despises them and finds them burdensome. تَحِيَّتُهُمْ يَوْمَ يَلْقَوْنَهُ سَلَامٌ that, that he will greet them, uh, or the day that he greets them with salam. And Allah mentions the term Rahim over here in this context. So, Ar-Rahim is a special mercy that is given to the chosen, and that's the believers. Ar-Rahman is the powerful mercy that everybody shares in, because Allah is characterized by mercy. Even the kafir benefits from the Rahmah of Allah through Ar-Rahman. And that's what our Prophet wasallam said, that if Allah did not have mercy, then He wouldn't even give the kafir a morsel of water. But it is from the mercy of Allah that even the kafir is supplied his daily rizq and his daily sustenance. And our Prophet he was seldom mentioned that when Allah created the creation, He divided His mercy into 100 parts. Now, this is a symbolic hadith because Allah's mercy is infinite and it cannot be divided. Allah's mercy is infinite. But it, just to give you an understanding, He divided His mercy into 100 parts. One of those parts He revealed to this world, and because of it, the entire creation has some bit of mercy. Because of it, people are merciful to others. Because of it, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, the mother horse, for example, shows mercy to the fowl, to the baby horse. Because of it, the mother bird feeds the baby bird. And Allah has saved 99 parts of His mercy. And those 99 will be used only on the Day of Judgment. So imagine, from the beginning of time until the trumpet is blown. Every act of mercy that any creature, any bird, any animal, any human does to any other creature, any plant, you add all of that mercy 
for all of the billions of years that creatures have been on this earth. And that comes to one bit of mercy. And 99 times that, Allah will use on one day. And that is the day of judgment. And that is why our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لَوْ عَلِمَ الْكَافِرِ If the kafir knew how much mercy Allah Azza wa Jal has, even the kafir will be optimistic about entering Jannah. This is the power of Allah's mercy. And that is why Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said that a person may sometimes aspire for some matter of trade or a position of authority and he pursues it so ardently till he comes so close to attaining it. Then Allah looks at him and he says to the angels, divert it away from him because if he attains it, I will take him to hell. So it is diverted away from him. But this person continues to see this as a misfortune, saying, Sabaqani fulan, dahani fulan, so and so beat me to it, so and so outwitted me, when in reality it was nothing but the grace of Allah. When Allah has characterized Himself with mercy in over 500 verses, when Allah has described Himself in mercy with five different proper nouns, when Allah says He is the Rahman, He is the Rahim, He is the Arhamur Rahimin, the most merciful of all those who have mercy, He is the Khairur Rahimin, the best of all those who have mercy, He is the one who is Dhur Rahma, the one who is always merciful, then how can we ever give up hope of Allah's mercy? How can we possibly give up hope of Allah's mercy? In fact, to give up hope of Allah's mercy is an insult to Allah. To give up hope of Allah's mercy is an insult to Allah of the highest magnitude. And this is not me speaking. This is the hadith. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, listen to this hadith. Akbarul kabair. The biggest of all kabiras. Sins are kabira and saghira, big and small. You have the big sins, the large sins, the major sins. You have the most major of the major sins, akbarul kabair. What are they? Number one, al ishraq, shirk billah. Number two, al qunutu min rahmatillah. That's the second on the list. And that is why Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the companion, he would say, لا يغفرن الله عز وجل يوم القيامة مغفرة لم تخطر على قلب بشر. He said, Allah will forgive people on the day of judgment in a way which no human heart could ever imagine. In conclusion, one of the greatest signs of success, therefore, is when you are inspired to ask Allah for His Rahmah time and time again, as is stressed in the Quran, in so many passages, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa qur rabbi ghafir wa raham wa anta khayrul rahimeen Say, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, My Lord, forgive and have mercy, for you are the best of those who show mercy. Any person who assumes that he single-handedly is too sinful for Allah to forgive, Wallahi, what an insult. Who are you? Who are you and what are all of your sins compared to the mercy of Allah? Have you limited the mercy of Allah such that you believe you alone in one lifetime can commit so many sins that Allah cannot forgive you? This is the height of insult. And that is why it is a type of kufr to assume that Allah cannot forgive me. That's why our Prophet said right after shirk number two to give up hope of Allah's mercy. And the Quran says, Who gives up hope of Allah's mercy other than those who are dalun, completely astray? And Allah mentions in the Quran, Oh my servants who have wronged themselves over and over again, you've gone beyond beyond the bounds. Allah is saying directly in the first person, He's speaking to them, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Never give up hope of Allah's rahmah. Allah forgives all sins. Brothers and sisters, the Rahman, the Rahim, the Arham al-Rahimeen can continue to show rahmah and He can do, have more rahmah than all of the creation combined and it will not diminish His rahmah if He shows his, the, the entire creation it, His eternal rahmah. That rahmah never finishes. So what can I do and what can you do that can extinguish that Rahmah of Allah? This is the hope. This is the month of Rahmah. This is the Shahrul Rahmah. 
And this is the month where we want Allah's Rahmah. And these are the 10 days of Rahmah. So let us renew our intention that we will gain Allah's Rahmah. Let us have that optimism because that optimism is a part of Iman. Let us believe in Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. Let us believe that the Rahman will show us Rahmah. That the Rahim will develop, will envelop us in that Rahmah.